That's the incense of prayer. That's the incense of worship. Praise God. So tonight, we're actually going to be talking about something that I was talking to Rick Wood. If you guys don't know Rick Wood, you got to get to know the guy. And his beautiful wife, Kate. He'll tell you she's the reason he is who he is. Praise the Lord, right? And his wonderful children. They're not children anymore. They're young adults now. Praise God. Now you need a job. Praise God. But Rick and I were talking today. We met uh, for, for, for lunch, praise the Lord. And uh, we were talking about a new song. And, and I feel the Lord's calling us. And this season of maturity is creating in us a whole new song. Can you guys understand? You guys have heard the word new song before. Amen. I believe God is bringing that to this place. I believe that our worship team is working on things that are crazy. Uh, awesome. I believe God is powerful. I believe that worship is expanding. If you guys couldn't feel it again, we could use old songs, new songs. The anointing is here and it's breaking chains. Amen. But I want to say something about the word new song. It, it's not what you think it means. The word new song, if you look it up, there's like six or seven different references in scripture where it talks about a new song. And some of these scriptures, I'll just kind of use them quick. It's Psalm 40, verse 3. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. Uh, Psalm 96 says, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Isaiah 42, uh, which is what we were talking about today. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise from the end of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that is in it, you islands and those who dwell on them. But I want you to take a look at what it means, what the new song actually means in context, okay? The new song wasn't just to glorify God for what he can do or for what the Bible says he is. That's not the reason for the new song. It was to glorify God in what he's already done and what he's about to do. So your new song is the testimony of this season of maturity God is bringing you to. The new song that's going to be released out of this house is what God has already done. What God has already done. We're no longer going to sing about who he might be and who we believe he is in scripture. We're going to testify and know he does raise the dead, folks. He does cast out demons, which we've seen. He does heal unexpected things. He does do financial increase. If you got a problem with that, read some scripture. He does. That is the byproduct of who he is. Listen, the song wasn't the, the music. It was the testimony in the song. Amen? So the, the song and the music was a byproduct of the testimony. Amen? If you look at David's Psalms, he was literally singing of the goodness of God and how his enemies came to persecute him. Oh, Lord, who, where, where are you, Father? I'm, I'm dug in the pits, Lord. And then he said, no, Lord, you have discomfited them. And he would sing these praises to God. And he would say, this is what you've done, Father. This is what you've done. So I'm going to read Isaiah 42 in its context. Listen to this. Thus says the Lord God, who created the heavens and stretched them out. What did he just do? He just told us what God has done. He created the heavens and he stretched them out. Who spread out the earth and its offspring. Who gives breath to the people on it. And the spirit to those who walk in it. These are things God has done. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will also hold you by your hand and watch over you. I will appoint you as the covenant to the people, as a light to the nations to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the dungeon. Look what he just said. I've already done this. This is what you're going to do. He said to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the dungeon. He's talking about Christ and those who will dwell in the darkness from my prison. I am the Lord that is my name. I will not give my glory to another. Whew. Can I get real? You want to know why some of us are struggling, why we haven't been called yet? Because he won't give his glory to another. He's sifting you out so there's no glory in you. Nor my praise will I give to graven images. Whew. Behold, the former things have come to pass. Now I declare new things. Behold, they spring forth and I proclaim them to you. Sing to the Lord a new song. The testimony just came out. Sing his praise from the end of the earth. Listen to Psalm 40, verse 1 through 3 in the context of a new song. Listen, I waited patiently for the Lord. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined to me and he heard my cry. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction and out of the miry clay. And he set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. 
Read Hebrews when you get a chance. Hebrews 6 talks about the anchor of your soul is Christ. He said he set his foot on the rock, making his footsteps firm. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and will fear and will trust in the Lord. Amen. God is bringing us into a new song kind of season. And it's not the song you're thinking of. It's not writing tunes out to Jesus. It's not just praise. Guys, I am telling you, God is doing something miraculous in us. He is taking you on a slope. Ooh. He's taking you on a slow path right now to develop the man he needs you to be. He needs to develop the woman you need to be. Georgia, you know why it takes a while? Because he's developing in you who he wants so you can be that vessel in purity. And there's no more Georgia in it. It's all Holy Spirit. It's all Holy Spirit. And some of us have been waiting for a while. We'll address that in a minute, okay? This song, this new song, listen closely. It comes with a cost. The Bible even says to count the cost, something the Pharisees didn't know. It counts. There's a cost to pay. You would know this. And nobody will see it. Revelation 5, 9 says this. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals. Listen to this. For you were slain and purchased for God with your blood, men from every tribe, every tongue, and every nation. That song to Christ cost him his life. Amen? It's not just singing a worship song and feeling. I'm telling you, those worship songs of the old sometimes, if you go back and listen to them, there's a power behind those songs. There's a power because it costs them to write these songs and the new ones now too. You're seeing them change. They're no longer me-centered anymore. They're focused on the power of God now. Amen? It's not this me-centered worship stuff like you're chasing after me, you're running after me, it's all about me. This was never about you. Let's get real. This is about God. This is about his son, Jesus Christ, and the influence of the Holy Ghost. This has nothing to do with you. The only thing you can do is submit to his spirit. That's it. The only glory you get is his glory, which you don't even get. And when we can receive that, he'll give you a new song. Because all you will have is what Paul said. I preach Christ crucified and no other gospel. <clears throat> Are you willing to pay the price for that testimony, for that new song? Are you willing to endure the cost? Are you willing to go through the desert like Christ did? And you know, the Bible says that he was the seed of Jesse, a root out of dry ground. His roots sprung forth out of dryness, out of nothing. And yet Christ, when you have him, he leads you beside still waters. He gives you something greater than you could have ever asked for, but his seed started out of dry ground. Are we willing to go through that root out of dry ground and not in a prosperous ground? Will you be like Christ when you're tempted in the desert and all you have is fasting and his word? It's, it's heavy. This is real stuff. This is a season of maturity. Amen? Amen? This is speaking the truth and love stuff. This is the real stuff. This is where we got to say to ourselves, Lord, am I ready for what you're calling me to do? If not, Lord, I need to be. I need to be. And for some of us, he's shaking our trees. You know why? Because he's making you ready for your season. Praise God. Praise God. Oh my gosh, everything's going bad. No, he's exposing what's bad to bring you to the good. Switch to thinking here. Amen? Switch to thinking. Sometimes, I, I was thinking about this. You know that song, This Is How We Fight Our Battles? This is how I fight my, amen? <clears throat> I kept thinking about that song, and I'm like, Lord, I'm not used to letting you fight my battles sometimes. And I mean, he has fought all my battles right? But I'm not used to just giving total control. Do you guys know what I mean? So like, Lord, here's my battle. 
I could help though, you know? It's like, there's that, there's that blip in you, right? But here's what I found out about that song. Some of us are asking God to fight a battle we're not willing to engage. Let me explain that. You guys know Jehoshaphat, the story of Jehoshaphat, right? Jehoshaphat shows up, God fights his battle, but Jehoshaphat went to the battle, and then God said, let me fight it for you. King David, David, before he was king, went to the war with Goliath, and then God said, I will fight your battle. You got to show up to the fight. You got to be willing to go up to that battle and say, no, Lord, now you overtake it because I'm here and this is all I can do. I got nothing left. I can't beat that giant. Nope, but you showed up. And that's all he's asking for you to do. Show up. Confront that battle. Fight it. Don't be afraid. Don't cower. Now's not the time to do that. If you think about all the battles in history, look, Joshua in the Battle of Jericho, right? I used to sing that as a kid. Joshua in the Battle of Jericho. Remember Elvis sang that song. Fun fact, did you know Elvis won all of his awards for Christian songs? He never won any award for secular stuff. Crazy. I don't even know why I'm talking about that, but hey, fun fact. <clears throat> Joshua, I'm telling you, he had to look foolish in front of his people. Can you imagine being them soldiers? We're going to die. He wants us to do what? He showed up to the battle and God overtook it. I'm telling you, you cannot ask the Lord to fight your battle. You're not willing to engage. You can't. He wants you to engage it and watch him move. Because you know what? When you show up, he shows you the testimony for your new song. Then you get to see his wondrous works, the Bible says. Amen? Joseph at David Goliath, price over the years. Are you willing to take years for that price to get your breakthrough? I, my mom has this avocado tree outside her house. She would get so mad at that thing. Seven years it took for it to grow avocados. First three years, she was like, okay, patience, God's showing me something. Year four, she's like, cut it down. <laughs> so she kept praying. She's like, Lord, I keep walking. She, literally, her routine is this. Her, dry, her walkway's about from there to about there. Every morning for an hour, she paces it praying outside of their house, right? Every day, year seven, she said, Lord, I want to see why this tree's here. She can't stop the avocados from growing. Now, are you willing to wait Wait it out in the Lord and watch him, bless. not only bless it, but where you have it in abundance. Read Leviticus 26. It says that you will eat the old store and it will replace with the new store. You will never lack. That's the blessing of God. But are you willing to take the years that it takes in waiting and in patience and in trials to get that anointing? <clears throat> There's this new thing called... Me, okay, let me say it this way. Maybe there tonight, this is a new profession of faith for you. Maybe tonight you're going to say, no, Lord, I will wait upon you. No, Lord, I don't understand, Father. I don't know the cost it's going to take. Father, I don't get this, but I make a declaration tonight that I want you to help me. Lord, I want you to develop faith. I think about Revive and what it cost. Ooh. I think about what it costs this place to have the openness of worship it has. I was telling him, he doesn't even realize that he walks me through things and those are new songs from his mouth and he's not even singing. There is testimonies to me to help me overcome and those are his new songs. What did it cost to have this place that we have here in this church? This isn't, look, what's so cool is like, this isn't about Revive Church. This is about obedience, folks, and that we have a place to come to where the Spirit of the Lord is glorified, where the Holy Spirit is vindicated, amen, where the cost came at a price, but we're walking in the freedom of those who are willing to pay the price. And I want him to share some of that with you guys. never really thought about it this way until Massey asked me to uh, try to put a summation together of the cost to get us to where we are today. Um, 
And so what I'm about to say, there's no pity party in it at all. That's not the point. Uh, the point has, what was the process that the Lord had to take me through uh, in order to use me the way he wanted to use me? And, and I'm just going to start in 2000, where many of you know my wife died of cancer, and the Lord told me I was leaving a very successful manufacturing career to go full-time into ministry. Well, the first job I had in ministry, I was a worship leader, and shortly after I started, the pastor had a complete and total mental breakdown, fetal position on the floor, the whole bit, not due to me, um, but it was me as a worship leader, our children's minister, and a secretary. That was the entire leadership of the church, and we carried that until a pastor named Matt Chandler came in, and he had his own worship leader, and so I stepped down and said, okay. That was a great experience. I went from there to a uh, conservative Baptist church where I was told I was too evangelistic for the church. Um, and so I moved on to there to a pastor who outright accused me of having a conversation with an elder that never happened. The elder went to the pastor and said that conversation never happened, but it ended our relationship um, I went from there to a, another pastor who I served in starting up a church, and um, during that time, uh, he went into my personal files, took my information, applied for two personal credit cards uh, without my knowledge, uh, which, by the way, is a federal offense. Uh, I found out when the credit card called me for approval, um, but it was just part of that walk. I went from there into a church where I, I knew there was more, uh, and I was the senior pastor of the church, and we went to Bogota, Colombia, where I got baptized in the Spirit. Getting baptized in the Spirit there upon return, the church leadership gathered together and said, we don't want any part of that, we want you to leave. So I was asked to leave the church that actually founded and, past, founded and pastored and that I'd grown in three and a half years from 32 people meeting in a strip center to three locations, 850 people and $2.1 million, $2 million in property. And the request came, and I was asked to leave eight days after I got back from Bogota. So there was no discussion, no negotiation. It was, you're gone. We weren't allowed to address the church at all not allowed to come back into the building, told we could come one night and pack up our desk and, and furniture in our office and leave. Um, they circulated a letter that literally had lies about us and what was going on in Bogota. Uh, I can remember going into grocery stores and people literally sneering at us, uh, adults, uh, and, and the Holy Spirit put me in a place that I had never been in my life. He said, you cannot vindicate yourself. Don't. Don't. Let me do it. So I just said, okay. So out of the 850 people we were pastoring, four wanted to hear our side of the story. And less than a dozen people would even speak to us after that all went down. I was broken. Broken broken because it was an amazing three and a half years of growth and salvations uh, and amazing. Uh, and in eight days, it went to nothing. And I spent days confused, uh, days praying, literally had gone and considered, uh, actually met with a recruiter to go back into manufacturing and just leave the ministry world because I didn't know what had just happened. And I heard nothing from God for 30 days, just zip after that. And then God spoke, and he gave us the green light to start Revive Church. And we found a building, and we rented 100 plastic chairs, and it was in a mini warehouse complex. So we went from 850 people in three locations to 62 people in a fancy garage. And in that location... I spent several nights on the floor praying in tongues all night long. Just what do you want to do, God? Where are we going with? We dealt with people walking out of our services because we were too charismatic while people were leaving saying we were not charismatic enough. I had people tell me, you don't know what you're doing, and people say, this is the greatest church we've ever been a part of. I had no less than 53,000 consultants to tell me how church should be done. 
and not a single one of them had ever been a lead pastor. And in that first location, and in the next one, I would march around the auditorium for hours, praying in tongues, asking for a full release of whatever God had for us. And after six months in that first little warehouse building, we moved into the building over on Johnson Avenue where our rent went from 2000 a month to 9000 a month overnight. I had people tell me I was an awful, unloving, unchristian pastor for not closing the doors during a virus. And people who called me a brave apostolic leader for keeping them open. And we spent two years looking for this building, signed six real estate contracts that all fell through for reasons that were not from us until God said, I want you on 95. And so we're here. reason I wanted to talk about that is look at the songs he just sang. You hear that? It wasn't music. It wasn't music. It was the testimony of what the Lord can do. I think some of us have those stories, right? I know what it's like to go through trial. And you know those prayers, Matt, that nobody sees? Those dark nights, right? You too, and when you're by yourself and nobody sees them? And your kids don't even get it, and they think you're freaks. Why are you pulling your hair out? Why are you crying like that, Mom? What's, what's wrong? What's up? You know, those kinds of things. Are you willing to go through it to bear the fruit for the kingdom of God? Because a lot of us want to bear fruit, but we don't want to be planted. We don't want God to uproot us, to plant us in a new pot sometimes, because it's uncomfortable. But what I see, the testimony of, we get to flourish and know the Holy Ghost because of the simplicity of submission in a couple who said, yes, I'm going to go through it. Right? Okay. <clears throat> so we want the prayer ministers to come forward because this is going to be a unique ask of all of you. Can we get the prayer ministers up here? And we're calling out, and to you who are watching on the, on the, on the screens right now, the, I want you to call up some people too. I think that you have some. But we're going to call up tonight those of you who are, what's the word? You're, you're struggling because you feel like God hasn't heard you, and you're like, man, I don't know what's going on. I know I'm meant for more than this. I don't understand it, Father. What the heck is up? I've tried. I've sought. I don't understand, and I'm just about to quit, and it's at those moments God speaks, and I want to call you up for prayer right now. I want you guys to come on up. Everybody take uh, stand up, please, and, and we're going to call some more people up as well. I want, I want to call up those people who know that God's design on their life is ministry, but it just isn't working out yet. Yep. It's just a struggle. It's just a trial. You're looking for an easy transition, and you're ready, and you believe you're ready, but it just hasn't been released to you because I know how frustrating it can be. I know what it means to walk around my backyard with a guitar and sing songs to God and cry and say, why? If I'm ready, why aren't you using me? Why aren't you opening the door? Why can't we just move forward in ministry? So if that's you, I want you to come forward. And I want you to, I want you to allow these people to minister to you, but in a particular way. I want you to come with a declaration that I am willing to pay the cost, Lord. Because I never would have been able to do what he's called me to do if he hadn't prepared me and I hadn't gone through the storm. Yep. So you got to go through the storm. There's a desert before the ministry, and you cannot short that circuit. You cannot say, just shorten that time and let me go on. No. He will not do that because you're not ready and the place is not ready for you. But if you're in a position where you're like, God, I'm ready. I don't know what you're waiting on. I need you to declare whatever you're doing to prepare me. I'm willing to keep walking through this preparation time. So if that's you, come on. Just come with that declaration. Let these people pray for you to give you strength. But be ready to declare, God, I'm ready yeah. to continue the process of preparation. There's, there's one more. Keep coming up. Please, keep coming up. 
Do you guys can go ahead and start making but your declarations and pray. Those of you who are afraid of the cost, because you get there. I've been there twice where I was afraid to pray to God because I knew the cost that was coming. And when I started to pray it, yeah, trials came, but I've never seen the glory of God like that in my life. And he's wanting you to trust him. So if you're afraid of the cost, you need that broken off you so you can walk in freedom of the spirit. So please come on up for prayer and declare that this is your season. This is what God wants for your life. Come on up. All right, so maybe you're here tonight and you've already been hurt by the church. You've already been hurt by the church. You're gun shy. You don't want to get back involved. If that's what God wants, you don't want that because you've already been there. You've already been hurt, but you know, you know, God is calling you back in that direction, but you just don't want to go yet because you're still hurt. Listen, we need to get that hurt off of you. We need to get that confession and profession made that God, I'm willing to go through the storm. God, I'm willing to go back again. God, I'm willing to submit myself again to the process of what you're building. Listen, I've been flat out rejected by the church, told to leave by the leadership, but it was the biggest blessing I've had in my ministry because God opens the next door and says, no, this is where I want you, but I needed needed you to go through that. So, so maybe you begin the declaration in your head, God, I know I've been hurt. I know it's hard, but I know this is what you want of me. So I'm going to find a way to get past that hurt. I'm going to walk through it. I'm going to be released from it. I don't want that holding me back. I don't want to hide anymore. And then the two, I want to speak to the, let's pray us out, but I want to pray to the people at home as well. So some of you are still afraid, this is crazy, but some of you are still afraid to come to church because of what's happening in the world and what you're seeing on the media. We break that right now in the name of Jesus so that you could have fellowship one with another, the Bible says, and that unity is uh, dwelling in your heart. We just bless that right now. We break the shackles of fear and trepidation over you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as we close this service, Father, we just thank you, Lord, you bless those who heard this. Father, those who didn't come up for prayer, Father, that they make a declaration right now in their heart, right now, Father, in their head, that they would know, Father, this is their season too. They will declare the wondrous works of God and that you will give them a new song tonight. We thank you for testimonies tonight. In Jesus' name, quick ones, sudden ones, in Jesus' name. And that, Lord, truly, these signs will follow those that believe. In Jesus' name. Let me follow that up with what Massey said about a song. Right now, you're writing the lyrics for your new song. And your lyric may be, I went through the storm. Your lyric may be, I went through the rejection. Your lyric may be, I cried in my closet. Your lyric may be, I felt alone. But God is going to end that lyric for you by saying, but he came, but he rescued, but he showed me, but he released in me. So don't be afraid of your lyrics to your new song. Don't be afraid of your song. Your song is what it is, and you will understand it later when the rescue comes, and it could come tomorrow. But guess what? It might not come till September. Are you willing to wait it out till September until that comes in September? Be strong. Be strong and recognize there's purpose in the process. There's purpose in the process. You may not understand the process, but there's purpose in the process. And the struggle with the purpose in the process is we don't understand the goal, so we don't understand the process. We decide we want an easy process, and God says, no, I've got to take you through the bottom of the sea so you know how deep it is. But it will be revealed, I promise you. It will be revealed. Stay strong. Persevere. Thank you for joining us today at Revive Us Now at our YouTube channel. Remember to click that subscribe button to Revive Church and share this video with a friend. And if you'd like to support this ministry, go to reviveusnow.com forward slash give.